morning friends uh, this is professor sheetan varur uh, i will be looking i will be teaching the subject of modern surveying for the second year civil engineering students we will be focusing on the uh, concepts uh, earlier uh, starting with the basic principles and classifications and we will slowly move on to the tradition uh, from the conventional and traditional methods to the most modern equipments which are available in the market and the techniques uh, which are being uh, used today for digitization and uh, for the modern uh, advanced methods of uh, surveying. So, we will be covering the basic principles, the classifications, how to conduct survey, how to do the leveling using the traditional and modern equipments both. So, we will, there will be a level of understanding of the concepts in the beginning when we start today. Surveying has been defined uh, by many as a process of uh, taking observation measurements to determine the boundaries, sizes, quantities and values of the objects such as the land, estates, building, farms, etc. So, uh, there are many uh, schools of thoughts of definitions, uh, all basically means that horizontal and vertical measurements have to be taken on the surface of the earth, so that they can be used for map making. So, when you look at the objectives of surveying, we will understand that surveying is basically to prepare maps or plans, to prepare uh, the, uh, to, the, to prepare them to the suitable scale, to show boundaries of the uh, district states and countries as well as to prepare different uh, engineering uh, works such as roads, railways, dams, etc. using these measurements. So, it forms the basis of the uh, of any work. Any work has to start with whether it is a mechanical building or whether it is a civil engineering building, it has to start with the surveying. So, surveying has got many applications like you can prepare topographical maps, you can prepare uh, cadastral maps, you can prepare engineering maps, contour maps and so on and so forth. This is an example of a map, city map. Now, we discuss the two major principles of surveying. Surveying, we, when we say we work from the global level to the local level, that means we come from the outside to the inside, we work from the whole to the part. Now, this uh, principle of surveying is very useful because based on this principle, you can uh, you can minimize the error at your uh, inside of your work or to the uh, you will you can compensate the work. There is no uh, accumulation or uh, uh, cumulative effect of the errors uh, as you go from the from the from a starting point to the outside. So, it is always better to work from whole to part. So, second principle says that you require at least two measurements to, to find out a new point. So, there should be two reference points otherwise it is not possible to uh, fix the uh, new point. Now, the first principle uh, if you look at it, it says work from whole to part. This is very important to establish the horizontal and control points. So, this sketch will uh, illustrate you the example of working from whole to part, the capital letter indicates from where we start the survey and the small letters indicates where we uh, move in inside and then we come to the center of the work. The second principle of surveying, uh, oh sorry, uh, the main survey lines are based very accurately with precise surveying instruments. So, a baseline, it, the main lines will be act as the baselines. Now, the second principle, when we say the second principle, we say that the second principle of surveying is to establish a new point with reference to two or known points. Uh, some graphicals uh, are there, uh, in the 10th standard we have seen geometrical constructions where we take two points A and B and we establish the new point C. The same principle is also adopted here, if I want to establish C, I should know either the distance is D1, D2 or I, I should know the distance and the angle uh, made with the uh, perpendicular angle, uh, angle made with the uh, right angle made with the baseline AB or the angle and side of one uh, one base point or the angle of both the base points A and B or the angles are the distance of one and the angle of the another. This should be the basic uh, way where we can establish a new point. So, that is what has been illustrated here and that is what is being tried to explain here. The Both the principles are very important. Now, uh, let us reflect on what we have learnt. Uh, if I want to work from uh, part to whole. Is it possible? Does the principle of surveying say? If yes, can you justify your answer? If no, if not, then why not? Okay. 
So, you have to look at the statement thoroughly, properly to understand what has been stated here and what we have learnt. Moving on, we will be looking at the classification of surveying. Surveying is majorly classified under two heads, plain surveying and geodetic surveying. The plain surveying is the surveying in which the earth surface is not considered uh, as a curvature, but it is considered as a plain, a level ground. In such survey, line joining any two points is considered to be straight. The triangle formed by any three points in this is a uh, normal triangle, not spherical triangle. So, surveying is carried out for uh, small areas of less than 250 square kilometer, then we call it as a plane surveying. On the other hand, we use the word geodetic. The word geo comes from geography. Geographical uh, features of the earth is being considered. Then we say that a very large areas, then we say that it is geodetic surveying in which the curvature of the account of the earth is taken into consideration. So, it is generally extended for very large areas uh, and uh, the line joining any two line is a curved line. The triangle formed by any, uh, any three points uh, is, is a spherical angle. It is, it is normally conducted by the, the geodetic surveying is normally conducted by the survey of India department. So, if you look at the distinguishing or the differentiation between these two methods, the earth surface is taken into consideration in plane surveying, it is not taken into consideration in geodetic. The curvature is ignored. The the curvature is ignored in this method and the line joining any two uh, station points is a straight line. So, in the case of a uh, plane surveying, uh, the triangle is also a plane triangle and the angles are also plane angles, unlike the geodetic survey where they are spherical angles. These are the two major classification we saw that plane surveying and geodetic surveying. Uh, but if you look at the uh, further uh, classification or methods, we can also classify them on the basis of the instruments which are being used on the basis of uh, the surface and the area uh, which is being uh, surveyed are the purpose for which it is being used and also based on the method it, for which it is being used. So, if you look at the instruments, chain, compass, chain and compass, plane table, theodolite, tachometer and special uh, labeling instruments are being used. So, chain survey is the most simplest form of survey where we, a chain is a, a substitute for a tape or a measuring tape. It can be, it, uh, it, it, it is meant of, it is made of metal uh, links or rings and they will be used for measuring the distances uh, on the ground. Whereas, the compass is a instrument uh, which is uh, having a magnet, freely suspended magnetic needle which, uh, which uh, points north south and it is used to measure the angle made with the magnetic north. So, and it can be also used. Uh, so, you can see this is a schematic sketch of the, uh, this is the starting point A and this is the ending point B. So, from start to end you can see that the distances has been measured by uh, from the from the tapes and the angles have been measured with respect to the north where which wherein comes the role of the compass. So, these both methods have the chain and the compass are now becoming very old and uh, nearing obsolete because of the modern uh, digital and electronic instruments. If you look at the plane surveying, then the plane uh, table survey. Uh, plane table consists of a plane table which is also a very very old instrument used by most of the government departments, the survey of India departments and all the state and regional uh, survey departments use this for, have been using this for very long time. It consists of a U fork, a uh, spirit level and a uh, plumb bob suspended for the vertical axis as well as a trough compass for magnetic north. It also consists of a paper which is attached on the top of the screen, uh, sorry, on the top of the table and you may, you can see the ground in front of you and you can measure them. Then uh, in case of a plane table survey, uh, it is mostly used for traversing of a large areas. So, you can traverse points A, B, C, D and then you can uh, come back to the point A to close the traverse. When we move on to the next uh, instrument which is theodolite which is used for measuring the horizontal and vertical angles in the vertical and horizontal plane. We will be more discussing this instrument more in detail when we go to the unit number 3 
on theodolite survey. The tachymeter is an instrument which looks and works like a theodolite, but the difference being we use the tachymetric uh, principles uh, or we use the trigonometrical uh, uh, formulas of cosine, sine and tan to measure uh, distances and vertical uh, level, uh, the horizontal and vertical distances indirectly using these formulas. You can see here uh, there is a there is there are two special crosshair in this tachymetric instrument which can be used which can be used to infer or deduce the distances and there are, there is a uh, the formula of sine cos can be used here to find the vertical distance from point A to B. Uh, we move on to the next instrument. Uh, basically, air, air, air or aircraft is another instrument which can be used for, to measure uh, which falls under the modern surveying. Digital instruments such as the EDM, the total station and DGPS, these are the most uh, modern equipments which we use today. So, you can see the aircraft, you can see uh, the planes, uh, you can see the total station, uh, it consists of a prism these are the modern equipments. Now, we move, move on to the methods. Based on the methods, we can say triangulation and traversing. You convert the whole area to be surveyed into triangles or you convert them into polygons that is traverse. So, you can see this is triangulation and this is uh, both are traver triangulations and this is traversing. So, based on purpose, for what purpose you are going to use the survey? You are used to for geological uh, ground surfaces, mine survey to explore the different mines, uh, mines and ores are for uh, finding the hydrological uh, maps to prepare hydrological maps of the rivers and uh, lakes are for tunnel survey are for uh, archaeological purpose to find the relics of antiquity antique, uh, antique forts and temples are for military purpose for, uh, for finding the military camps etc. Uh, now, based on the nature of the field, whether it is uh, you are going to use the lat calculate the latitudes and longitude using the sun and the earth, sun and the stars, uh, heavenly bodies, or whether you are taking it from the aircraft, which is from the air, that is, then you call it as the aerial survey. If you are taking uh, it from the water, you call it the hydro hydrological or bathymetric survey. If you do the survey from the land, we call it as the topographical, cadastral or city surveys. Thank you. So, uh, uh, we come to the lesson, end of the lesson 1. Uh, in the next lesson, we will be learning uh, under the uh, types of uh, surveying. Uh, we will be learning what are the what are the leveling instruments which are used to measure the vertical uh, distances and the types of leveling thank you